Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hello and welcome to another episode of Faith on Film. We've got another great show for you today. First of all, Holly McClure will be speaking with Thaddeus O'Sullivan. He's the director of a new movie, The Miracle Club, which opens in theaters this July 14th. Then Jen Gotson Chandler, who is the producer and star of the movie The Farmer and the Bell, Saving Santa Land, will be here to speak about her new documentary, What is True Beauty? But first, let's take a look at the trailer for The Miracle Club. Ladies, what's the name? The Miracles. First prize, two tickets to Lewis. Best of luck. He's so fine. What do you want to be going to Lourdes for anyway? I hope he's going to, to go there. If you go out that door, don't bleed bother coming back. Miracles happen there. I could speak. How are you, Chrissy? My mother is dead. I'm in a place I swore I would never come back to. Hi. I wouldn't have recognized you. Forty years will do that, do you? I'd say, yeah, mixed. Yes, but it's great to have her back. Marvelous. Bloody marvelous. Congratulations. You're coming to Lourdes. Who's going to have to do the cooking and the cleaning? Not me, I can tell you, that's your job. What'll I do on me own? I'll be back before you know it. You will. Holy <sighs> okay, Mary, Mother of God. Welcome to Lourdes. Here's I am sharing with you. <laughs> Is there only one bed? Your ma wouldn't be fussed. I'm not my mother. Ain't that the truth? Ready. I'm not. Why did you leave? Leave? I was banished. I leave. I loved you and you left. I'm glad you came home. Can you ever forgive me? You don't come to Lourdes for a miracle, Eileen. You come for the strength to go on when there is no miracle. It's still alive. Oh, just about. <laughs> and there's always hope. Peace. That's what I hope for. I think I had me a miracle. Well, I actually missed you. Thaddeus, hello. I, so um, wonderful to speak with you. Thank and you. Uh, and I want to thank you for making an interesting road trip with older women <laughs> and, and making it actually intellectual, not just goofy and campy, but really <laughs> something of substance. I love this movie. All oh, right, oh, great. I yeah. did, and I, and I love the time period set in the 60s. I mean, when there, there was the women like that, you know, there probably still are today, but especially at that time and place and culture. And, uh, you know, you first got involved with this project 15 years ago, didn't you? Round about that, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, HBO were involved at one point and they asked me uh, to do it. And then they, there were some issues, uh, legal issues, I think. And uh, I, I dropped out anyway. And uh, I thought it had gone away. And then about two or three years ago, um, I was working with a friend uh, or it was a friend, somebody, a writer I had worked with, uh, said the producer wanted me to come back in, and uh, he was working on it. So, so that was interesting to go back and work with him. And so, yeah, anyway, that's how I got back in, involved. I was delighted to get back uh, as well. Um, yeah, no, I'm glad you like. It. I'm glad you think it's uh, it is. It is all those things. Um, uh, that mixture of drama and comedy, and um, you know, being religious, but also being a little bit um, uh, not too pious uh, is also, you know, a balance, <laughs> a bit of a balancing act. Uh, it is. So. It is. But I mean, you had an amazing cast, let's face it, to work with Maggie Smith, Kathy Bates, you know, Laura Lenny, and then uh, Agnes O'Casey. She was a newcomer, wasn't she? Kind of. Yeah, she was she was amazing as well. Yeah. And she was, uh, you know, she hasn't been in the business very long. She went to acting school and she's she's done a couple of uh, TV things and uh, and uh, and she did this. Uh, but she seems to hold her own quite well among all that talent. 
Now, were, were the talent booked when you took on the project or did you take the project on and then you got the talent? Because that kind of is interesting. Yeah, so when I um, when I was first involved uh, all that time ago, Maggie Smith and Kathy Bates were involved. Uh, uh, Jimmy Smallhorn had had brought them in, uh, the r- original writer, and um, uh, so uh, so then, like I say, I had nothing to do with it for a very long time, and then um, when I got involved, uh, we got Laura Linney uh, in. Well, you know, it's hard to probably encapsulate all of the wonderful moments of working with these women <laughs> and the scenes that you did. I know Kathy said she really related with her character, with her own mother, as she got into developing her own character. You know, did you find these roles start at one place, but grew as you were directing the film to a whole different? Well, I, 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 I found you always want to, the, the cat, you're always a bit suspicious when, there are stars connected to a movie that they are are they are they well cast you know are they are they right for these characters and uh, so that uh, and and I thought they were so I decided to make the film uh, <laughs> but uh, to answer your question during the course of every day it was uh, an absolute joy to see the instinct that they had for these characters and the energy that they put into winkling out. Uh, getting to the heart of them, uh, they were, and you know, there were two things there. One was you know, I was looking at these uh, extraordinary actors at work, uh, uh, which was a, a, an absolute privilege. But I was also looking at um, a little bit discovering these characters. You know that they were they were finding. I mean, Maggie Smith on a set, she would improvise all kinds of little things, and they weren't. Um, they were. They weren't just sort of arbitrary things. There were things that came out of character, and mm-hmm. uh, they were all like that. Uh, Laura and Kathy as well. They would go around the set and they would poke and push, and feel and look, and uh, really get a sense of the characters. And then they'd add their little bits, and they were so, they were so good at that. That was. Um, uh, like an amazing experience watching them and uh, my feeling when you see that kind of uh, engagement that kind of chemistry not just with each of, with the other but with the set as well you leave it alone you know you just try and get the camera in the right place and let the rest take care of itself what was one of your favorite scenes I mean or more memorable that you now that you've seen the film that you love directing Oh, that I love directing, or that. Well, I mean, the scene that you directed, that you're like, yeah, that turned out like I wanted it to, or you know, was was beyond what you thought. Well, the most terrifying scene to contemplate was the the scene where they did discuss uh, giving birth and abortions, and that was uh, terrifying because I had the four actors in a room with the six pages of dialogue, and you had to shoot it in a. You only had the day to shoot it. Um, and, and you know, it's trying to make a a room with only uh, just a roof with four walls interesting uh, visually. Uh, of course, that went out the window straight away because you're looking at of these four actors. So the only thing that's interesting in the room is the actor. Exactly. So, but uh, but the performances in, in that scene were just amazing. They were, yeah. and uh, they. They just, I mean, they were just so, so wonderful. And that's the film, that, that's the moment where Agnes or Casey, I was, I was wondering how she's going to deal with this, you know. She was just so collected and centred. Uh, she was admirable, really, the way she dealt with it, you know. You know, the story is called The Miracle Club. And of course, it's about Lady of Lords, and if people are familiar with that, is in France and the, the story behind all that. But it's really more about the journey, isn't it? Not so much the miracles as is when there are a few in the film, I think, but it's more about the journey that these women take to go there and what they go through with their own characters. Yes, exactly what they go through. Uh, I mean, uh, I think that the, and when they start off, they're on a, on a, I think you said it at the beginning, uh, it's a, like a road movie. They're on a road trip, you know. They they get into the car and they go, and they leave everything behind. I mean, I kept thinking of Thelma and Louise 
which is a very, very different film. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking at the beginning of that film, when uh, they have abusive husbands and they have to get out of the house and they have kids and 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 they and they they get to basically run to get out of the house and get in the car and go and they're on their road movie. Okay, so in a way, it's kind of similar. They 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 have to get out from under the husbands. You know, mm. who are they're not violent to them, but they're cranky and self obsessed and they need to get out of the house. And I just love that notion. Uh, so they're not and they. You know, they were well, one. Well, a couple of them want a miracle. It would be nice, uh, but they also want to be. Uh, they also will have imbibed the whole spirit of Lourdes, which mm. I grew up with. Which is that if you go there, you will have a spiritual experience, whether you're an un- an unbeliever or not. You will get something from it, and I think that they know that. They don't. They they might not get a miracle, but they they will. They, maybe maybe that Kathy Bates character is unhappy she didn't get her miracle, but the <laughs> others the others really. Uh, but and even she gets something. Laura Linney has to say to her in the bus that's going uh, going home. Say, okay, you've been to Lourdes, but did you go to a doctor? Yes, 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 oh, yes, yes. I was going to Lourdes <laughs> as if what would I need a doctor for? <laughs> Well, as a matter of, as a matter of fact, you had a personal experience in your own family with your father and mother who went to Lords because of your father's illness. And I mean, you already had that in your youth and in your genes, so to speak, to even directing this movie. Oh, very much so. Uh, and um, their experience was not to go and look for a miracle. Their experience was my mother had prayed for my father to be better, prayed to her lady to intercede on, on, on their behalf. And... Uh, and then my father got better, uh, and um, they went to say thank you. And uh, they, they went to say, uh, so they're, they're, the image of them getting on the plane and going, there's a picture of them on the, on the, the tarmac at Dublin Airport with their the diocesan group, and, uh, and they look so happy oh. because, because uh, their prayers were answered. My mother never mm-hmm. referred to it as a miracle. She just said uh, our prayers were answered. And that was a thing that you heard a lot. My prayers yes. are uh, and um, uh, I've never had that experience with prayer, but um, but I grew up with it. Right. And your life's not over yet, Thaddeus. <laughs> you still could have that experience. Well, I know well, how but, to say them. Oh, exactly. You know, but tell about it was a touching to me to read that there was actually a young girl who was an extra in a scene who actually was ill. And then she died, I guess, after production. But, you know, the mother said, no, keep her in the film. I thought that was so touching. I talked to her this morning because we're having a screening in Ireland. I can't go. But and I wanted her to go to, to, to make sure that she went, to, she went, to, she went. So she was very brave. You know, she came on the set. We, we asked for people people to come who were disabled, had disabilities. A number of people came and she brought um, a, a Amelie with her. And Amelie had Rett syndrome, which is a degenerative disease. Uh, you know, you're, you're not going to survive. And uh, she, she, she had a beautiful child when she was born and then uh, and for some time afterwards. And then the degeneration sets in. It's a terrible, uh-huh. terrible uh, thing. And uh, she uh, she was on the set. Uh, she was uh, awake for the first half of the day and then the second half of the day she fell asleep. Um, so I wasn't, I didn't have much of a chance to talk to her. And, um, uh, uh, and then two weeks, two or three weeks later, uh, uh, she died. Uh, so I sent a, a rough cut of the scene to the mother and said, you know, do you want her in the film or not? Because it's, it's up to you, really. I don't know how you feel about that kind of thing. And um, she said, oh, no, I'd, I'd love it. Um, I'd love to have that memory so she's going to see it she's going to see it next week (laughs) so you actually had real extras there who'd had that must have been an interesting atmosphere on the set yes because a lot of people uh we were in dublin a lot of people shot it that we built a set in dublin so a lot of people have been uh, right and they were 95 percent catholic and there, there was no great discussion about the culture because everybody grew up in it. They knew it, and they recognised, you know, the crew recognised it. Everybody, everybody knew what we were doing here, and um, a lot of the, the the exes, like you say, were were familiar with all of that and had been wow. to it. And um, wow. 
I don't think uh, Amelie had been to Lourdes. Um, I don't recall her mother mentioning it. And I don't even know what she thought about Lourdes. Well, it was it, this movie. I mean, there are funny moments. There are touching moments. Um, I think women from all different backgrounds and men actually will relate to this movie. But it's not just a movie for older people, is it? Well, uh, no. I mean, uh, um, it's got older, a lot of older people in it. But <laughs> but I mean, it's like a mentoring movie like to me. I mean, it's like for a younger generation should see this, 20s and 30-year-olds. And this has got amazing storylines in it and points to be made. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, it brings older people to life, you yes. know, uh, as well. Uh, um, you know, for me too, because uh, although I'm, I'm an older person, I tend to look at older people as older than me. You know? <laughs> me too. <laughs> that. So, you know, we've all got something to learn about older people. But absolutely, and I think, uh, you know, bringing up children is also a lovely part of it. And, and uh, you know, the whole, the history of, of children in it is interesting. And, uh, yes. uh, you know, young people will find that a contemporary thing as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the, the, the some of the scenes with the young children are, are interesting. And the Agnes O'Casey character is very relatable, definitely. She's very mm -hmm. fantastic. I love what a priest says. I love the line, you come for a miracle. You you don't come for a miracle. You come for the strength to go through what you're going through for the miracle. I mean, I, it was something to that effect. I love that line in the movie because it really wasn't like, you're not coming for a miracle. You're coming for the strength to get through whatever you're going through. How many people need that? Yes, it's, it's the strength. When you don't get a miracle, it's, it's it, he says, you know, when you don't get a miracle, it's to have the strength to move on when you don't get yes. a miracle. And when yeah. she gets on the, on the bus, she uh, we can't hear her properly in the in the in the in the in the mix at the moment. But uh, she gets off the bus and she goes, oh, you know, because she's I'm not sure that's enough for me. She's thinking, but she gets on the bus and Laura Linney talks to her, and uh, and you know she comes around. She realizes that she has. Uh, I've learned not to hate you, and I've learned. Uh, I, I feel so guilty about hating you in the past, and uh, I, I don't hate you anymore. So she's oh. a miracle, you know. And so Chris and the Laura Linney character reminds her, it's, it's all very well, you know, you went to Lourdes, uh, but you should go and see a doctor. <laughs> but it's the power of love and forgiveness, isn't it? Yeah. Of love, forgiveness, and it's that whole relationship part of it as well. Um, I just feel like this is, you know, such a great film. And I thank you for the nuances and the directing. And, oh, my gosh, Stephen Ray was in it. I love him. And it's, you got such a good cast. It just, it all made so believable. It made it so, not believable, but relatable and believable, you know? Oh, well, fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Yes. But, no, you're and, right about uh, the, 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 the expectation of Lourdes that something will happen. Yes. You know, if you're not going for a miracle. You're leaving everything behind. The Telman Louise, you're leaving everything behind. Something's going to happen. I'm going to have an adventure. And you go to Lourdes and the adventure is almost always a spiritual one, not necessarily a religious one, I think, for some people. Because a lot of non-believers feel quite humbled by being there and, uh, and seeing uh, such a gathering of people uh, focused on their spirituality. Yeah. Well, you are quite an amazing director. You've had an award-winning background. I loved Into the Storm with Ridley Scott. I mean, there's a whole plethora of movies you've done. And you're working on a film, Hidden Assets, right now, right? The series? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm in uh, Toronto. I'm in, where am I? I'm in <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> yeah. we're, uh, we're just editing the film here. We shot it in Ireland and in Belgium. But weirdly, we're editing the film here. So that tells you all you need to know about how to how the finance of a film is put together. Uh, so yeah, so that's where I am now. Um, well, I I um, congratulate you on that. I look forward to watching that as well. And make more movies in America. Come on, Thaddeus, <laughs> make more films. And I pray that you get that prayer answered. Still, your life's not over yet. You've got a lot going on. So I bet you God's going to speak to you in amazing ways. Still, Thank you thanks so much. much. Thank you for being with me. Lovely to talk to you. Take care. Lovely too. 
Thank you, Holly. That was a wonderful interview. I'm here now, though, with Jen Gotson Chandler, who has been in so many movies that I don't even want to list what they are because we'll be here the whole time just doing that. But she did play Nixon's daughter, Trisha, in the Oscar nominated Frost Nixon, directed by Ron Howard. Now, she's also a producer known for her film in which she starred along with her husband, Jim Chandler, The Farmer and the Bell Saving Santa Land. She's here today, though, to talk about her latest project, a documentary called what is true beauty? Jen, welcome back to Faith on Film. Hey, Isaac and Holly. I love you guys so much. <laughs> oh, okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. Did you eat a watermelon or what's going on there? Well, maybe it was a 25-pound medicine ball. <laughs> um, well, we are actually due wow. in six days with a little baby girl named Savannah in honor of the... Um, the movie location that my husband Jim and I met on years and years and years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, you know what? Uh, I mentioned that you were the producer and starred in, along with Jim, on a movie called Saving Santa Land. Now, I had a little bit of involvement in that with you guys. Uh, but tell me, how is the movie doing and where can people still watch it? Absolutely. So the farmer and the bell, B-E-L-L-E, <laughs> saving Santa Land. It's, I mean, how great is it for Christmas in July? But we have streamed over 100 million minutes. We've been a bestseller on Amazon. Um, we trended um, a year ago as one of the top Christmas movies. We are now on Peacock and Tubi. We're making our sequel. And um, so I would say you can watch it on Peacock. Tubi, YouTube, uh, basically anywhere where you're watching your movies. Um, and Amazon is another way that you could take a look at uh, yeah, the fine. farm. That's so. fantastic. Folks, make sure and do that. Now, you have also produced now, though, a documentary, What is Beauty, which I think it kind of is tied to the movie in some way. Uh, can you tell us all about that? Absolutely. So the documentary, What is True Beauty?, really dives in from a prayer perspective to be able to help women of all ages, but I would say women who are in their 40s and, and upwards to the very mature, to really understand how do we see ourselves as God sees us, a magnificent masterpiece. And that is the theme of our movie, The Farmer and the Bell. And so we take five strategic strategies that have been research, prayed over, and that follows the inscriptions on the bracelet that my character loses. For example, one of the messages is about being a joyful giver. And from our research, Isaac, and our test groups, we learned that when we have a special gift that God has given each one of us, and we take that gift, as it tells us in First Peter, and we use that gift to serve others, but with joy. The joy that radiates attracts more people mm -hmm. into the life of our hearts. And it's because it's Jesus's joy. And that is way more attractive than having the perfect hair and the, the perfect skin and, and the best of this and that. And so that's what the documentary is. What is true beauty? I take us through prayer activated exercises. We interview John Schneider and Corbin Burnson and Henry Cho and some of these men that are icons and they literally tell us what they think is beautiful. And ladies, let me tell you, it is not looks that they're talking about. See, hmm. what is true beauty is now on Tubi and YouTube. Uh, for free. And uh, it's just a great 40 minutes to sit down and really be activated by the love that God has specifically for okay. you. Okay. But so you mentioned women 40 and I don't know what other over, uh, but of course also young ladies, but it sounds like those attributes you're talking about are attributes that males can also have. Can I possess true beauty? <laughs> of course I <laughs> um, one of our friends over at Christian Movies, when he watched the documentary, he um, was in tears and he explained that the messages in this movie have struck a chord so deep inside of him from when he was young and overweight and how he realizes that God has made him a magnificent masterpiece. And so when I was a teen, 
I wanted to be in that popular crowd, as I'm sure most girls did. And I didn't have social media. And then as an adult, um, I went through a divorce and I felt so unlovable. And those pains that I had as a child echoed. And so I wanted to find healing. And I went to the scriptures and I spent fasting time with Jesus. And as an actress, I've been acting for a long time. I used visualizations of the scriptures of how God says that our body and soul are marvelously made. And I would take the pieces of my body that I felt so uncomfortable with, and I would just imagine giving it it to Jesus. And I would imagine Jesus just breathing his truth of scripture over me. And root by root, I started to heal. And I was like, I need to help other girls, teens, women. And this starts at a very young age, around age five, girls are seeing other women, other pictures and saying, oh, that's what their belly looks like. I need to look like that. (laughs) And that's what we need as loving adults to come alongside our youth and really help uplift them. And that's why What is True Beauty, our documentary is phenomenal. And our new book that we just released Mm -hmm. for teens called Beauty and Likes. Okay. Now, Would you say that social media has kind of really enhanced that problem of these girls thinking that they have to be these models, you know, because, uh, I mean, Mm -hmm. they even have filters now where even if you don't look that beautiful, but these filters make you look like some kind of model. I mean, it just seems like uh, that's what the world is portraying is you have to be beautiful outside. Yeah. And um, that is 1000% accurate. We have a depression increase of over 50%. Mm -hmm. We have a suicide increase um, by over 35% since social media started to come around. And that's exactly what happens. And uh, Dr. Lynette Sim uh, explains to us psychologically what happens in our book, What is True Beauty, and in our documentary, is that when we post a photo, and we get a like or a share or a heart, it releases the endorphins in the brain, which creates this feeling of feeling up, which just feels good. So now when you reverse that and you post a photo and you don't get that response, it actually activates the opposite, causing the feeling of depression. All right. So what is true beauty? Where, uh, you know what, what's the best place for people to follow you or to learn more about this? (laughs) Uh, I know you mentioned all these places where they can see it, but one location where they can go to and get all the information. Yeah, is our website, The Farmer and The Bell, B-E-L-L-E, like Beauty and the Beast Bell, thefarmerandthebell.net. And um, that is like a one-stop shop. You'll be able to see all the things. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Uh, I know that you uh, potentially could have a baby any minute now, so I'm going to let you go just in case. Uh, Folks, this is uh, it for our show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, Go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.